You're listening to the Father Jim Clark Show, broadcasting on Heaven's Road FM. Well, welcome back to the show today. And today, I would like to talk to you about a lady called Claire that and her friend that I met recently on an aeroplane trip coming back from Rome. Um, recently, I went to Rome just for a couple of days. Uh, that was for an ordination to the diaconate of one of my parishioners. And we wish Mark well in his new ministry. But this particular lady, Claire, ended up uh, sitting next to me on the plane coming back. And from the very word go, it was very obvious that Claire was a rather um, distressed passenger. I think that's the kindest way of putting it. I could tell from the way she was gripping onto the sides of the seat as the plane began to taxi. And her friend kept talking to her to try and take her mind off it, but nothing, it would seem, would take her mind off this impending flight. And I was kind of amused, really, thinking to myself, if somebody is so frightened, how is it they actually talk themselves on going on a trip that involves a plane journey in the very first place. And she kind of explained to me a little bit later on, because what happened was that very shortly into the flight, she and I got talking, and I tried to say to her, you know, don't worry, um, I knew that there were about seven or eight of the priests on this aeroplane, and I said, look, this is a very holy plane, there's a whole rake of priests on here, I'm sure God will look after us. And from that moment, she began to talk and she began to open up. And it was a very interesting conversation. She was suffering from cancer and I think it had a pretty rough time with it. And her friend, who I am going to call... I'm going to call her friend Sheila, and I do apologise if that's not your name, Sheila, um, but I do forget, I just remember Claire very distinctly. And this friend of hers, Sheila, had been a very, very, very good and supportive friend to her during this time of chemotherapy and radiotherapy and all the other therapies that poor Claire had to go through. And she had kind of talked her friend Sheila in coming to Rome for as a bit of a thank you, really. Now, Claire was from Liverpool, and she began as she began to talk, it was very clear to me that she had given a lot of thought to her own life and where she was at. And the only thing that I can say is that I think Claire was being very, very harsh on herself she kept saying to me that you know her mother was a wonderful person but she wasn't and you know in the eyes of the church and in the eyes of god she was an awful person and she'd done terrible things and all the rest of it and even though she might have been saying this with a bit of a twinkle in her eye as is the way with many liverpudlians who have that amazing sense of humor I do think that she was trying to portray herself as she thought she was. And I actually think, having listened to her, I, I got the impression very quickly that she actually was a lady who had tremendous faith and strength of faith in God. And the more she spoke, the more, the more I was convinced of it. You know, at this point, even though she was kind of in the recovery period from cancer, she was still looking to this wonderful friend that she had, and she was glad that she was able to bring this this friend with her to Rome. And it got me kind of thinking about, perhaps you have found yourself in this kind of situation where all of a sudden the rug is really pulled from under your feet, and that usually is either with somebody who dies that you're very close to, or like Claire, if you end up feeling uh, or uh, end up being told that you have cancer or some other awful, you know, life threatening illness. What do you do? You know, if you are a person of faith, I think you can do one of two things. 
And you can either put your whole faith in God and face it happily, or you can perhaps blame God. Now then, I want to talk to you about another lady that I met only yesterday. I did some baptisms yesterday. I had four baptisms. And at the end, when all everybody had gone, there was a man and a lady left in church. And she was having her photograph taken next to the statue of um, St. Anne at the back of the church. And then on our notice board, there is a huge notice about the diocesan trip to Lourdes, the pilgrimage to Lourdes. And she was kind of pointing at this, you know, like they do with selfies. And her other half, this gentleman, was taking a photograph of it. And I asked her, have you ever been to Lourdes? And she said, oh, yes, twice, but when I was quite young. And then she said, almost in the same breath, oh, when I was young, you know, I was um, I was really religious and I love my faith. Then there was this pregnant pause and I said, <laughs> well, what happened? And she then went on to tell me this awful story. She said um, her grandmother died quite suddenly. And she had, my mother had been divorced. And when the priest came to deal with the, the funeral, he wouldn't accept the divorce. And he wanted the father to be here to talk about this funeral. And it, everybody got very, very, very upset. It sounds to me like this priest did just about everything wrong that he could. And she said from that day, all of us that were in that room have never been to Mass since. Oh, my heart sank. And I, I just said to her, look, please don't hold, you know, the sins of one idiotic priest against the church you know there are idiots in every walk of life and i'm afraid including the priesthood and sometimes we do say the wrong things we can put our foot in it the worst thing is of course at a bereavement because people are at their most vulnerable and at their most sensitive at that point so i said to her look you know why don't you try and give the church another chance and she actually said to me well you know i've really enjoyed the baptism that you've done that maybe I, I i'll come here and i said look you will be welcome here any time at all we'd be only too glad to have you back on board and you know it would be a great thing not only for you but also for the church to welcome someone home and you know i kind of said to her, you remember that story about um, the 99 sheep being left on the hillside while the shepherd goes to look for the one that's lost. You know, that's what Jesus thinks. He wants everyone. He doesn't want anyone lost. And he wants us all to be part of his um, part of his church. So anyway, she went away a little more happy, I think. And before she went, I said to her, look, why don't you come to Lourdes? I said, it's a bit late for this one. And actually, we're going to Lourdes on Friday this week. I said, but... Next year, you know, we go every year round about the same time. It's usually th the third week of July. It usually runs uh, through the third week. Sometimes it straddles into the first few days of August. But why not give it a thing? And she just went away with a smile on her face. And she said to me just as she left, you know, I'm going to think about that. And I was delighted. I thought, well, you know, perhaps that's a little seed planted in her mind that will give her a way back into the church. You know, it's a really weird thing how, and I know I've spoken about this before, if you say the right thing at the right time, the fruits can be huge. But like that other priest, if you say the wrong thing at the wrong time, it can be devastating on people's lives. And that doesn't just go, I'm afraid, for priests. It goes for all of us. You know, we call ourselves Christian, and if we're not living a Christian life, showing the fruits of the Holy Spirit, if we are not sensitive and sensible about the way we live and about the way, or about the things that we say, then, you know, people do tune in, and people do recognize us as being Christians, 
but you know we're not really doing what Christians should be doing. So at this point I'm going to play a little bit of music and I hope that you know it's given you something to think about but for the time being we'll have a piece of music. Loving can hurt Loving can hurt sometimes But it's the only thing that I know When it gets hard You know it can get hard sometimes It is the only thing that Makes us feel alive We keep this love in a photograph We make these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing Hearts are never broken And time's forever frozen still So you can keep me Inside the pocket of your ripped Jeans holding me closer till our eyes meet. You won't ever be alone. Wait for me to come home. Loving can heal, loving can mend your soul, and is the only. So that was Ed Sheeran with his single photograph. Now, back to Claire on a plane with her friend. Um, the more I think about this woman, the more I think that she has been very hard on herself. And I, I, I sometimes see people doing this. In fact, I see people doing this a lot. And I have to ask myself, why is it that we can be so so hard on ourselves. 